I've been trying to keep track of my emotions. But it's hard because sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I'm angry. Hey, Power Director Peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the motion tracker in Power Director 17. If you've been waiting to watch this video so you can get your motion tracking on, I want you to put hashtag tracking love in the comment section below. All right, Power Director peeps, kept you waiting long enough. Let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 17. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. And if you subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell to get notifications every single time I upload content to YouTube. Let's move something. If you want to track an object, on screen, the motion tracker is the tool for you. It allows you to track an on-screen item, adding a title, media clip, or effect, keeping the added object at the same distance relative to the item being tracked. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the motion tracker to make it happen. As you can see, I have a clip in the timeline of some delicioso breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day, people. And I want to track the milk in this video with uh, some text or a logo or whatever. You know, especially I need to make sure that there is no confusion around what the contents of that picture actually are. So I need to go ahead and put the word milk or something on the screen. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this clip in the timeline. And then I'm going to go here to tools. And then I'm gonna go to Motion Tracker. Now, once the beautiful Motion Tracker opens up, I want to move this box here, the selection box, and I'm gonna put it over the item that I wanna track. And in this video, like I said, it is a picture of milk. So I'm gonna go ahead and resize it using these nodes here. And booyaka, just how I like it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is click on this track button so that the motion tracker tracks the movement of the pitcher of milk. Now, if the tracker loses the object, then you can try making the tracking box smaller or you could track something on the object, like maybe the glare that's coming off of the uh, milk. Maybe I'll just make the tracking box small enough to just cover one of those uh things of glare on the milk. Uh, anything that stands out, a logo, a specific color, whatever. Try tracking something smaller to see if the uh, tracking works a little bit better. Or you can actually refine the tracking results using this button here. So there's a button here and this is uh, to track one frame at a time and then you can move the tracker wherever you need it. So if something gets lost, you can move the tracking box back onto the item one frame at a time. So if you click on this button or you can actually uh, do control M on your keyboard, it will change colors like to gray and it'll come back white. Once it does, it's moved forward a frame and now I can move the box using control and the arrows. I can move this little box and move it back on top of the item that I'm tracking. Then I can go ahead and click on it again or do control M again and move to the next frame. If the box is not on the item when I move to the next frame, then once again, I can use control and the arrows to move it back. But right now it's on the item so what I would do after that, once I know that the tracking is working, it's on that item, I'm just gonna click on track again to let it automatically track the rest. And if the box loses the item again, I can go back to that frame and refine it all over again. So I'm gonna click on track and let it track it again. 
And as you can see, the section that is a brighter green is a section that is tracked. The section that's a duller green is a section that has not been tracked. Now it is all tracked because it is that brighter green color. So now I want to pick something to track. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select the add image PIP object or video clip. And then now I'm going to select import media clip. And I'm going to pick something on my hard drive. You can pick something in the media room or from the video overlay room for any PIP objects. So now I have this logo here. I can adjust it uh, using the nodes. I can change the size, change the aspect ratio. I can rotate it. do all kind of good stuff with it if i want to okay this is my video and i do what i want to with it now here on the parameters i can add a border if i want i can make the smoothness uh i can take out the smoothness or i can make it normal or smoother i'm gonna go ahead and make it smoother and then i can adjust the effect distance with the tracked object so it'll keep the same distance if i check this box or I can adjust the effect size with the track object. So if the track object moves closer to the screen or zooms in, then the item that I'm using to track would either get larger or smaller based on how the item is moving. I'm just gonna leave it like it is right now. I'm gonna press play so that you can see what it would look like. Alrighty, that's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So now let's say I wanted to add a blur to the milk. I wanted to blur it out. I can click on effects. And when I do that, it's gonna get rid of the other object that I just tracked. So I'm gonna select yes. I'm gonna move this back to the beginning. And here you can go to this drop down and you select what type of activity or effect you wanna add. You could add a mosaic. If you wanna spotlight something, you can add a spotlight. You can add a blur. I'm gonna go ahead and add a blur. You can also have the option of Gaussian blur, but I'm gonna add a blur. And then you can choose your mask type box or circle. I'm gonna leave it as box. And now I'm gonna go ahead and resize it so that it covers the whole pitcher of milk. And it's all blurred out there. All right, you can choose the degree of the blur, the gradient depth of the blur. You can invert it so that the milk is visible and everything else is blurred out. You can choose the smoothness once again. I'm gonna choose smoother because I, I am all about being smooth, baby. You know I keep it smooth. And then we can adjust the effect distance and uh, the effect size as well. So I can press play to preview this and see how it looks. Magnifico, blurred out milk. Okay. so. Last but not least, on these options, I have titles, so I can add a title. Once again, it's going to say it's going to remove the other object that I just added. I'm fine with that. So now I can type in my text. Choose my good old uh, font that I want to use. And uh, all the other different title objects or options you have here. Uh, you can add a backdrop if you want and use a different color in your backdrop. I'm not going to add a backdrop at this time. I am going to add a border and it'll be black. You can change that border color if you wish to do so. And you can choose to maintain aspect ratio. I'm going to leave that alone. You know I'm going to keep it smooth, baby. You know I'm going to keep it smooth, baby. That's what I do. Keep it real smooth. Uh, you know what? I am going to click on maintain aspect ratio just in case. And once again, you can choose these different options here for the distance and the size of the object. I'm going to leave them as they are. And once again, you can go ahead and click on play.
and we're good to go there. Now, there are some other options on here that I want to talk about real quick. You can add a tracker. So if you want it to track the eggs or the flour or something else, you can add a tracker. And then you can go ahead and track whatever item you want to track and go through all the steps again. If you decide that you want to remove a tracker, you could just right click on a tracker and do remove tracker. If you want to track uh, different things as they come onto the screen, like let's say at this point, this bag of wheat comes onto the screen. So let's say I wanted to start tracking that as well. Then I can go ahead and do a mark in at this point, or I can add a tracker at this point where the wheat comes on so that you don't even see the tracker for the wheat until the wheat comes onto the screen. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this tracker here. And I like what we got. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now the actual milk title has been added to timeline track number two. And it will go ahead and track the milk as it moves along. So if I press play. You got what you're looking for. Motion tracking complete. And there you have it, people. How to make amazing motion tracking video with PowerDirector 17. Don't forget to check out more of my content to learn how to use PowerDirector. If you decide that you like PowerDirector 17 and you want to buy or upgrade to the software, I'll leave some links in the video description that you can use to purchase it. Those are affiliate links. So if you use them, I'll get a small commission, which will help me continue to create content that teaches you how to use PowerDirector. You pay the same price as if you went to the site on your own and bought the software. So if you want to help me help you, Use the affiliate link. All right, Power Director peeps. I want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. If you have any tutorials that you'd like me to make, head over to the video description and complete my tutorial request form. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk and chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, if you want more tips, tricks, and learning on Power Director, then you need to watch more of my content so that you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.